part 97 of C-Sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the performance implications of a multi-threaded program when run on a single core or processor machine versus multi-core or processor machine. First, let's discuss how to find out how many processors we have got on our machine. There are several ways to do that. The easiest way is to use the task manager. And to get to the task manager, simply right-click anywhere on the taskbar and select this uh, option, Start Task Manager. That should bring up the Windows Task Manager. Under Performance tab, you should see CPU Usage History. And the number of green boxes here represents the number of processors you have. Since I have two green boxes here, it means on my machine I have got two processors. That's one way. And another way is to use you know, the processor count property on the environment class. So we can use this uh, code in any .NET application. Here I have a console application. So let's say console.writeline, let's say processor count equals plus environment class dot processor count. So let's quickly run this and see if we get the output. Look at that, processor count equals two. And the third way is on the Windows command prompt window, just type this command, echo number of processors, and that should give you as well. So I'm at the command prompt at the moment. So if we execute that command there, look at that, we get that too. Okay, so at the moment on my machine, I've got two processors, uh, meaning, you know, two threads can be simultaneously executed. All right, so on a machine that has multiple processors, multiple threads can execute application code in parallel or simultaneously on different cores. For example, if there are two threads and two cores, then each thread would run on an individual core. This means performance is obviously better. So if two threads take 10 milliseconds each to complete, then on a machine with two processor, the total time taken is 10 milliseconds. On the other hand, on a machine that has a single processor, multiple threads execute one after the other or wait until one thread finishes. It's not possible for a single processor system to execute multiple threads in parallel. Since the operating system switches between these threads so fast, it just gives us that illusion that the threads are running in parallel, but that's not true. On a single core or processor machine, multiple threads can affect performance negatively as there is overhead involved with context switching. We discussed what context switching is in the previous session, but let me briefly explain that once again. So basically, let's say when we have got two threads on a single processor, you know, the processor can execute only one thread at any given time. So each thread will get a time slice, you know, for which it can run from the processor. So when the processor is, is executing a thread, you know, let's say the thread takes five seconds to complete, but then the processor allocates maybe, you know, let's say five milliseconds. You know, the thread is going to be run by the processor only for five milliseconds. After that, the processor is going to save the state of the thread somewhere and then switch to another thread pick up that thread, execute it maybe for five seconds, and then save its state somewhere, and then switch back to thread one. So the processor has to switch between threads rapidly, and that's called context switching. And there is some overhead involved between you know switching these threads, okay? So if two threads take 10 milliseconds each to complete, then on a machine with one processor, the total time taken is 20 milliseconds because obviously the threads are still going to take 10 seconds each to complete. So 20 milliseconds plus the thread context switching time. Okay, so it will in fact be uh, slightly more than 20 milliseconds there. Now, let's actually quickly write a simple program. So on my machine at the moment, I've got two processors, meaning two threads can execute in parallel. Okay, so here I've got um, a two functions, basically, even number sum function. So what is this doing? It's simply counting from zero to five million, and then it's checking whether the number is divisible by two. If it's divisible by two, then we know it's an even number, in which case, um, you know, we are finding the, you know, the total sum of the even numbers from zero to five million. And then finally, we print that sum. 
okay so that's that function and we have a similar function here but this one is actually computing the sum of odd numbers okay so two simple functions but then they are going to take um, a few milliseconds to run because you know 5 million is a big number. actually it's 50 million not 5 million it's a big number so now within our main method what we will do is um, we will actually call the methods you know without using threads and see what time it takes and then we'll create threads two threads and execute both of the methods and see how long will it take okay so basically at the moment both of them are static methods so I don't have to create an object of the class so we can simply call even numbers sum so we're calling that function and odd numbers sum and we want to print the time so to print the time let's make use of the stopwatch class that's present in system.diagnostics namespace so system.diagnostics and then within the main method let's start an instance of a stopwatch so let's call it stopwatch equals stopwatch dot start new so that would uh, start the stopwatch and then once we have executed both of the methods stop the stopwatch and then console write line total milliseconds without multiple threads so here we are not creating multiple threads a single thread is going to execute this code so we will see the time it takes okay um, while we are here let's also create multiple threads and execute them and see how long the threads take to execute those two functions so let's go ahead and create a thread let's call it t1 equals new thread and we want this thread to execute you know even number sum function and similarly let's create another thread and call it t2 and we want this thread to execute odd numbers sum function and obviously we want to start um, the stopwatch again and then stop the stopwatch and then print the time it takes so total milliseconds with multiple threads actually we should print the time and how do we get that stopwatch object has got um, elapsed milliseconds property so let's use that so let's actually copy this code and paste it right here okay so we are just creating threads here we need to start them as well so t1 dot start and t2 dot start and then let's wait for the threads to finish and to do that use the join method on both of the threads so t1 dot join and t2.join alright let's go ahead and run this actually let's build the solution and let's run this program from Visual Studio command prompt so let's go to all programs Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 Visual Studio tools and we want to run Visual Studio command prompt so let's run it as an administrator right and at the moment our project is present in C drive so let's navigate to the bin debug directory copy that path and then paste that within the Visual Studio command prompt and change the directory okay so our project name is threading example so we should have an executable with that name so threading example dot exe let's run that so sum of even numbers look at that total milliseconds without multiple threads it has taken 766 milliseconds whereas with multiple threads 579 let's run it once more so without multiple threads 792 571 let's run it once again 785 
566. So obviously with multiple threads we are we are able to execute you know the threads um, much faster. Okay. All right. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.